far away. Well, he, you know, obviously was touch and go there, so we'll just have to continue to rest him. It's an ankle sprain, and those things can be complicated. Um, appreciate him trying to trying to push through it. You know, he was trying to manage it all week, try to give it a go for the game. Came out early at halftime. Uh, still wanted to make himself available in case it came up. Again, we got to be mindful as we practice this week to to make sure when we get him to the game he's healthy. So I don't know what the practice will look like this week. We'll just have to take it day to day with him. Yeah, Jonah, same thing. We'll have to take him day to day with the MCL. And he did come back, obviously, but he's going to feel it. There's going to be a lot of soreness there. Um, so to make a prediction on what the week's going to look like, I can't do that yet. So we'll just take him day to day. Yeah, yeah. I think um, those are really the main two. There's some other guys that, you know, you'll have to manage some soreness after the game, but those are the two primary guys that came out like that. Good. I, I think as good as he's been. When you look at the offense and what you think is likely to take the field goal in regards to the playoffs, what do you think is probably going to be the Um, I, I look at it the last game. You know, we didn't start fast enough those first four possessions. And then after that, we got into a really nice rhythm and moved the ball down the field. You know, really the two possessions before halftime, um, we had the one play just after half, then we had the two more possessions before we moved the ball inside the five on both of those. So. Um, there's there's a lot of production to be had there. Obviously, the consistency over the entirety of the game. You want to score 40 points and score in every possession. We haven't yet done that. Um, but but I think that there's been a lot of positive things we can build on and, and some things that we got to improve on early in the season. What does the offense do best? And what do you have to do to lean into those guys more? What does the offense do best? Um, I, I think that we've got a lot of playmakers that want to get the ball in their hand. They do some really good things. I think the protection from the offensive line has been tremendous yesterday, really. Um, we had, we had two sacks and one hit on the quarterback, uh, but I thought overall the, the offensive line did an outstanding job. I thought we did a good job getting the run game going yesterday. I think Joe Burrow has been really efficient in making good decisions with the ball and being accurate when he throws it. Um, and so, again, we just got to build some consistency. Uh, our flaws is when we get that first first down, we're really good within the drive there. It's just those, those first two plays being more efficient to put ourselves in a better third down situation. That's really been our Achilles heel when that happens. We talked about the big off tempo in this game. Is that the falling behind? Is it the three and outs? Is it a combination of both? Well, three and outs are going to lead you to fall behind, so I, I'd say it's, it's a combination. Good. Yeah. So. What changed for the run game yesterday, and, and what specifically did you guys find successful with kind of running out of the gun once you guys did kind of get some things later on? Yeah, I think it complemented um, what we were finding success with in the past there in the second quarter and the second half. Um, I thought those guys up front did a good job. Tight ends did a good job. Uh, Backs did a really good job. Mixon and Samaje. And, and, you know, there was, there was some combination stuff we were trying to do with the runs and the passes there that we found some success with. You were struggling there, obviously, on the end. But, you know, just from what you saw, what were the way the secondary units kind of keep them on and uh, other receivers? Because they didn't really seem like there was much explosion downfield besides uh, the ones that have some less promise. What were they doing that was disruptive? Well, when teams are going to play too high like that, that's that's what they're hell-bent on taking away and, and banking on you not being patient enough to stick with the run game and throw the stuff underneath. Um, that's what we did. We had two really effective drives in the second half operating that way, two really effective drives in the second quarter operating that way. Um, it makes for a shortened game, obviously, when you don't have the explosives because you're not going to get as many plays because it's more uh, possession-type stuff and, and running, so the clock's going to run. and. Um, you know, it's weird to even look at that first drive in the second half as a possession because it was just one play, and so you feel like you just had two possessions in the second half. And and so this doesn't give you a lot of time to, to go score 40 points unless you score in every possession of the game. And so it feels like an inefficient day when in reality we, we really felt like those five possessions in a row were, were pretty good. They just weren't good enough to, to score enough points to win the game. What are the biggest keys to running the ball, especially in the low red zone? I mean, red zone running, but especially yeah. – well, every, every defensive structure is going to be a little bit different than you face. And and so you don't always go into two weeks in a row facing the same structure and, and having the same um, uh, looks that you're going to get. So so things can be tweaked a little bit from week to week. Um, it's, it's, you know, we haven't been as productive as we've wanted to. And and uh, I don't think that's – anyway, those are things that we got to continue to improve on is scoring in the low red zone.
I, we won't let this one play into another decision we have. Each game's a little bit different. But like down there inside the two yard line, there's a lot of opportunities. Um, down there, you can score to go up, go by four. Um, you give them the ball to minus two if you don't get it, which is what happened. Unfortunately, they drove the 96 yards and kicked the field goal there. Um, that's not what you're anticipating happening. You're anticipating getting a quick three and out because of the because of them being backed up and then getting the ball around the 50 yard line and and getting a chance to to either get the three or the seven. Just didn't work out that way. Um, and so that's you can always look in hindsight. Yeah, you take the points because it didn't convert. Um, that's a tough way to operate if you're always working in hindsight. You got to make the decision you think is the best in that moment. Unfortunately, the play we called didn't work for us. That field goal was kind of progressive in the end, but at some points not confident with that. You still just have to make the second one. Has it ever been brought up in the media that this uh, the play call that you know somebody else in the play call put the jump start in the wrong position? Has that been broached in any way yet? Uh, you know, it's it's collective on the headset every play. So whether it's coming out of my mouth or somebody else's, it, it all gets the same. Um, end result, you know, we, we communicate every play. Uh, Brian and I, Frank, Pitch, Troy, James, everybody's in there, Justin. Um, we talk through it after every single series. And, you know, it's – I thought we started really fast the last two weeks. We scored on the first possession. So it's always going to be if you don't score early, you didn't start fast. You do score early, you started fast. And, and there's been times that we've done both. Um, I wish that we scored seven points on the opening drive every single week. It just hasn't been that way yet. Um, we saw Buffalo score zero points against these guys, you know, up until that two minute drive last week. So we knew that these guys had really started fast on defense. We knew it was going to be a challenge. Uh, we just weren't efficient enough on those first two plays, or really those first four drives, to to get us jump started there. That was disappointing that it worked out that way. How did you evaluate the first four drives? It's a work in progress to make sure we get as many points as we need. Um, it's something we worked on all week, you know, so that's that's what we do when we game plan and, and we try to find plays that are going to attack that defensive structure down there in the lower red. Um, it's not just something we make up on the sidelines. It's something we worked on and studied, and um, we've run it twice before. Uh, once we got stopped in the inch yard line to Hayden. Uh, once TB scored and we got called back, and this one just didn't work. Milo was saying on post after the game that had it been man, it might have been a much better result. And had it been man? It wasn't the look that they wanted. Yeah. And I'm wondering, you know, when you call a play like that, is it responsibility on the ball carrier to kind of identify what he has? He wishes, he told us he wished he could have ran it and been into the fair or walk into the fair. How, how do you, when you look at that play, how do you see what he was saying? Yeah, it's, uh, you know, uh, they got on him fast. Of course, in hindsight, you wish you'd throw the ball away. Um, but that's that's the risk we take when we, we put the ball in the guy's hands. They don't play quarterback. Um, that's that's you're rolling the dice there. And unfortunately, it didn't work out for us. Um, that's not something I, I put on TV. You know, it's it's you know it's something you rep a couple times in practice, um, and in the game it unfolds a little differently than how it could have played out. Um, so again, that that's 100% on me for the play not working out and our guys not being put in the best position possible. It's not on TV. We can say all day, throw the ball away. Um, you're asking a guy in a specialty play to, they want to make a play. That's their instinct is to make a play. Um, it's not something he gets paid to do, go back there and play quarterback and make decisions. So um, ultimately, it's it's uh, they played the look really well. They did a good job passing it off um, and, and then triggering once they saw what was happening and everybody was covered. So the play just didn't work. That fast play from Sam Sutton to Jimmy G for that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he was. Unless he's wide open down the field at all. Yeah. Didn't throw the ball away, you mean? Oh, yeah, yeah. Or, yeah, throw it away. He, I know he couldn't throw it away because he, he, they got on him so quick. But right. you don't want him forcing the ball. Forcing the ball into coverage. No, we don't want that. No. And there was a play, uh, was it the first quarter, where he came running down and called a timeout. But the time, the play clock wasn't low. Was that a look that you? 
end of the – oh, yeah, we were going to saw zero corner cat, double corner cat on a play action, and uh, it was it was not going to be good. Um, so we saw their check. Um, I could see Joe trying to trying to go through the thought process of getting us to a different play, and um, it was going to be a tough look based on the formation we were in, so we called timeout. Very similar to Dallas. We called timeout against Dallas on third down. You guys brought up the, the quote about the empty thing. Very similar. You get into a unique formation with guys playing different positions, and you get a look that's a very challenging look, as you can see. And sometimes that's worth burning a timeout um, as opposed to making Joe have every answer for every blitz and every formation. Um, that can be challenging. He can do it. And and probably if I'd let it play out to one second on the play clock, he would have gotten us to something that wouldn't have been disastrous. It might not have been ideal, but it wouldn't be disastrous because he does a good job of solving that. But uh, sometimes it's, it's it's tough to put them in that position with nine seconds left on the play clock to make him solve that problem where we can just utilize the tr- time out there in the first half. You don't want to burn through your timeouts, but I thought that was a situation where we were in a, a good situation there. We didn't want to take a negative play and burn a timeout and get to a better play. Is it the fact that we have shovel snaps with the structure that you had anticipated and it didn't look like? Yeah, you know, it, was, it wasn't – Um, it didn't work out the cleanest we had hoped. They they made a good play. They, they had some players that – um it was a little tough to see. I thought Marcus Peters would have reacted well when you watch the tape, he he did a good job tracking Stanley as he came through there. It didn't come to that. Um, they edged some of our back blocks. It was tough. So, um, a, again, you put it in for the right reasons. It just it didn't work out in our favor. Yeah, we just talked through it before we play. Yeah. Is there, I mean, I, just being thinking, you know, I guess <coughs> based on what you see with the LT, but do they see defensively the offense being consistent? Like, you're not a good defense if you're giving. Do you feel like you guys have been that far in the right place this time? Uh, we, we're two and three. So to say that we've been successful is, is hard to say right now. So, again, we're, we're going to continue to work as a unit and coaching staff to find ways to – to have a better flow over the course of the game and, and score more points than we've scored. How important is that defense? Yeah, that's that's something we need to do. He's a key part of this offense. And um, it's – how's he look? He looks good. He, he does everything we ask him to do. And and that's in the run game, that pass game. Um, that's asking him to make some key blocks on some plays as well. Uh, I got a lot of confidence in, in TB. That hasn't changed. The production hasn't been there because we haven't given him the opportunities to have the production. And and that's something certainly he, he's got to be a big part of what we do because he's a premier player. He's, he's one of the best slots in the league. Um, he's been a, a tremendous player for us over the four years I've been here. And and uh, he needs to continue to be a big part of what we do. Um, well, it's sort of saying I don't think we had the ball four yards on the one yard line. You know, we have it on the five and try to run it down. We get down to two, and um, you know, there's some weeks we've done that. We we've probably run the ball more inside the five yard line, and then we've thrown it by a large margin over the course of the season. Um, that's something that we've really done, and sometimes it's been good, sometimes it hasn't. We continue every week to to present a low red zone plan that we think is going to work best, whether that's running, passing, RPOs, shovels with pass options. Um, there's a lot of things that goes into it. it. It's a lot of work that we spend time studying, our team, other teams, and what the defense is going to present to try to come up with this plan. When it doesn't work, um, it's a significant portion of the game. Just like when you go for fourth down, you don't get it. it. It it should require a lot of second guessing because there are critical moments in the game when you're on the goal line and, and you lose a four-point play or you get no points. It's a huge turning point in the game. So it's something that we take a lot of pride in, trying to give ourselves the best opportunity. When it doesn't work out, it's a kick in the gut because they're, they're critical moments in the game and, and they're ones that get talked about often. That, that doesn't weigh into our decision making, but um, it obviously becomes a critical point in the game. And it's something that we need to, to, to create, a, tra- create the best plan to put ourselves in a position to score seven points instead of three or zero.
how do you see Mitchell's uh, role grow? Yeah. I think Mitchell has continued to improve over over the several years he's been here and and become a um, a more valuable player on offense. He's always been a special teams player for us. Um, I think Mitch continues to to get better and better with every week that passes. We have a lot of confidence in him. Obviously, Hayden's our our, our starting tight end right now, and we try to do our best to get him as involved as possible. But uh, have a lot of confidence in Mitchell and the job that he can go in there and execute and do. And he had the he had the short yardage pass last week against Miami. That was a huge play in the game. Um, you know, when his number's been called, he stepped up and done a really good job. And and I'm proud of them. Hey, he's he's really grown over these these last several years to put himself in a position to where, um, you know, he's he's uh, been a good player for us. You guys were up two so early. Uh, how much does the goal change change when you lose a guy like that? And what's kind of the balance between not wanting to change up your game plan when you still have uh, your plus quarters to play? Also, like in that game, something you can't figure out. Yeah, I, I mean. T is a uh, T in my eyes is a Pro Bowl receiver, and so when you lose somebody like that, um, certainly it changes some things. Um, you end up moving Jamar around a little bit to, to get him some of the things that maybe we're going to go to T, and and to keep it involved that way, so you don't have to shelve some of the things you worked on. Mike Thomas stepped up and did a good job. I mean, the play Hayden Hurst caught for touchdown. It was either going to be him or Mike Thomas based on how the safety played it. Really, um, Mike had repped it once. T had repped it once. Mike got in the game. Um, Mike made the great play, you know, that would have gone a T on the, the, I think it was first and 15 conversion um, when, when they, they pressured us and played man coverage on the back end and Mike had the explosive play. So we still have guys that we believe in that can step up and, and uh, they'll continue to do that. Stanley, Mike, Trent, those guys' number will be called when, when T can't practice or if something comes up like that in the game. But I thought our guys adjusted really well. Um, Burrow, Jamar, TB, when we start moving guys around, they, they have processed the right way and been able to handle it. And that's – not everybody can do that. Not everybody can adjust like that. And those guys have done a really good job of it. Um, Go ahead. Finish up and then I'll come back to you, Charlie. You mentioned kind of moving Jamar around. Is that something you guys want to do more? I think you said it's something kind of out of the backfield. Guys are sliding to you. Like, you know, in drives, something like that. And just quick bubble screens. Is that something you guys want to do more? With well, he's – you know, he, he's really explosive with the ball in his hands. And so we're just looking at every way you can get – him, Tyler, all those guys, the ball down the field quickly, intermediate. Um, it's a balance to to also move them around so they're not always just in one spot. Um, we like doing that. They like doing that. And, and so, again, every, every week the game plan is going to be a little bit different, but but we have tried to move Jamal around quite a bit. Um, for us, the defensive ability, like, what curriculum, how much does it Yeah. I mean, there's such a challenging offense to prepare for, and, and I thought Lou and the staff had a great plan. Um, the players obviously believed in it, did a really good job. Um, you know, to keep that team, limit them to one time in the end zone is is very difficult just because of – it starts with the quarterback. He's such an ex, such an explosive passer, such an explosive runner. And, and you know, obviously they've got a, a run scheme that challenges you and then they got the play actions off of it and you're always worried about the quarterback keeping the ball for explosive plays. Um, so sometimes that requires you to give up five to nine yard chunks um, where, where it looks like, man, why is that guy wide open? Well, it's, it's, you're trying to limit some other things. And I think our defense did a really good job of, of bending, not breaking, creating the turner when you needed it, and, and really doing enough to, to give us a great chance to win that game. And, and uh, it just wasn't enough to, to get the win, unfortunately. You've seen many times this team separate and drive the situation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, character, really character at the end of it. Um, just the football character of understanding that this is a long season and, and you can't ride the roller coaster that most people want to ride um, after every loss. You know, it's it's when you win, things are great. When you lose, everything is broken. Um, that's not that's not how we approach it in the locker room and the meeting rooms, and, and our guys understand that. And um, the challenge of, of a team that wants to be a great team is, is bouncing back from a game like this and then going on the road in a tough environment, finding a way to win. And I'm, I'm more than believe our team is capable of responding the right way. And uh, again, it's it's five games into the season. we got a long ways to go. Um, I love the effort of our team. I love the approach of our team. Um, it's unfortunate a record is what it is, but again, it's it's there's a lot of ball left to play. And, and uh, I'm very confident that we'll get things rolling the right way. Maybe the difference this year and why that happened, and then, and then there's that injury after that game. 
I have no idea. I, I don't really look at the metrics of it, to be honest with you. We just we watch the tape and try to put the best plan together. Um, I don't measure 17 games last year to five games this year. I, I wouldn't even know how to do that. But, um, again, I, I felt like as the game got going, we had a lot of success in offense, um, finding the right groove in the running in the pass. Um, everyone wants us to be explosive on every play. That's just not how it's going to play out all the time. Um, so again, sometimes it requires patience to move the ball down the field and and uh, find ways to get seven points. You, the, the problem is when you're patient, you move the ball down the field on a 17 play drive and you end with no points. That's like I said, that's a kick in the gut, and that's that's going to prevent you from winning more times than not. When you finish those long drives, you eat up those chunks of clock, you give your defense a break, but there's also the momentum change of ending with no points. That's what we have to move away from because if you get seven points there, I don't think it's viewed the same way because of one play on the two-yard line, you score seven more points, you potentially win the game, um, then maybe the success of the offense is viewed very differently. And so, again, it, it comes down to those those little moments there where you just got to be on top of it. You got to have the best play call. You got to have the best execution um, to put yourself in a position to, to have a better chance of winning. And unfortunately, we, we just didn't get that done yesterday. No, I, I think uh, there's there's three clear things in our three losses. We've started down two scores, and that's because of the position we put ourselves in. You know, offensively not being efficient enough just on the first two or three drives of the game, and and defensively, you know, let's let's hold them to zero next time. You know, in the first quarter, our defense has done an outstanding job, so I'm not I'm not throwing rocks at them at all. But um, we've been best when we've. Played fast on offense, got ourselves a lead. Defense has done a great job keeping out of the end zone. And then we played the whole game with a lead. Uh, the three times we've lost, we've been down two scores. And that's that's a collective team effort on why that's happened. Um, and then we spend our time digging out of it. We've done it every time. Uh, it's just obviously the best recipe for us is to, to get a lead early and sustain that thing and then, and then get a chance to play how you game plan going into it. It's, it's hard to have an expectation on the production because we have a lot of weapons. And so you're, you're just looking at the overall productivity and not, I think Jamar needs to have, um, you know, however many catches and T and TD and Hayden and Mixon, the backs collectively too. So it's hard to, to go into a season and say, this is what I project. It's more, um, we have a quarterback that does a really good job of just finding the best matchup and who's open the progression and throwing them the ball. And that can be any of the five. Many times yesterday, he threw to the fifth guy in his progression. Um, and, and sometimes that's just the back on a backside wide route. But uh, he does a really good job of giving everyone an opportunity based on what the, the coverage is matched with the concept and finding the open guy. And um, when Hayden has been that guy that's that's gotten the ball, he's made the most of those opportunities. He had the back shoulder catch on our sidelines. That was tremendous. They've worked really hard. Him and Joe have worked like crazy getting that down so that when we do it in the game, they're on the same page. And it was. It was a big play on Marcus Peters, a corner. Um, not always do you take that versus a corner and a tight end. And Joe obviously had the confidence to do that. And uh, Hayden, Hayden allowed it to pay off for us. Thank you. Thank you.